guys this is Tina welcome back to my channel so I'm just here for another one of our mass making workshops so today I thought we would make some envelopes in this kind of style um, so kind of pouch type envelopes so I haven't glued this down or anything I wanted to you know show you how to do it uh, just before we get cracking I'm just going to share with you my storage solution at the moment for our mass makes it's sideways on because obviously I'm going to struggle to fit this in on camera otherwise, but it's just one of those shoebox things that you buy. It's got a metal plate on the front. I've had this for a long time, so, you know, I happen to have this anyway. I think it's probably for photos or something like that. I just made a bunch of these um, cards, you know, to separate the pieces out. Of course, you don't have to do that. You could just have your pieces all, all in together. Uh, but I just thought maybe this would be quite an organised way of doing it. Um, this little tab, this was for just from some punches that I had on my um, Big Shot. So I've just separated them out. I mean, I guess really I don't really need one probably at the front. Um, so I've got my first things there, which are the paper clips. I've got the little coin envelopes, the policy envelopes, the matchbox um, books, you know, and so on going through there and as you can see I've then got some room at the back for the other things that we're going to be making so I just wanted to share that with you I'm not saying that this is the best solution or anything but for me this was quite a nice solution I mean unfortunately you really can't see because I can't fit it in on camera but from the front it's quite easy to see now what I've got so you know I quite like how that's turned out because I've been able to sort of step them in height you know a bit like a theatre seating area so that I can see what I've got there so I just wanted to share that with you let me move it out of the way okay so today we're going to crack on and make some of the envelope pieces so this is the type of thing that we're going to make as you can see you can make them in a whole bunch of different sizes so I've just got here my glue whoops my scissors and then I've got a variety of papers so I've got off cuts and things that you know I haven't obviously used and I've got some full sheets of sheet music and then I've also got here one or two of the off cuts from pieces that we've cut down already from the 12 by 12 sheets of paper so you know as a way of using up your 12 by 12 sheets using up your supplies these are quite versatile because you can really make them literally any size that you want um yeah so let's just crack straight on with this now i'm going to move the things to off the desk so that i'm working one piece at a time so it's not really horrible and jumbly to watch let me see if I've got a plain white sheet that I can just put down here so as you're not just looking at my messy worktop saver which thank goodness I had that down because I imagine what my desk would look like if I didn't so right now what I've done when I've used the sheet music I've obviously folded it down and then I folded down where the flaps are going to be just to make that slightly uh, stronger. So all I'm going to do is then glue that down. And of course, you know, you could use anything. You could use glue, you could use double-sided tape, you could use anything you like. You could stitch it. Um, you know, again, if you watch my channel, you'll know that my sewing machine is not near me so stitching on film is just not really an option so um or stitching on video is not really an option so for me I just thought this works absolutely fine too so um and you know not everyone has a sewing machine so it's quite nice to have options really so once you've glued your flaps down you're then going to just bring that bottom flap up and then what you've got to do is kind of make sure that you've got a big enough gap that you would be able to tuck things in 
and then you can obviously just glue down here on each side and again you know even if you've glued your flaps to reinforce them this is where you may like to use your sewing machine instead of the glue as I say I mean I think the glue works fine I don't think you have to sew these you know I think they look just as good sewn or glued but just to give you some options you may prefer to stitch them and you know if I was then doing that I would probably just stitch down there probably along the bottom as well and then stitch up coming up that side as well and that's it that's your envelope completed so I'll do one completely from scratch showing you so again I'm just going to use the sheet music so what you want to do is fold it up roughly where you want it to be so say we have it here <clears throat> and then I like to fold over this flap just to you know strengthen it and you can obviously glue it down at this point so I'll just glue that down and actually going to just take that glue in slightly because what I'm going to do with this piece is trim it down. So that's where I've reinforced it. This is our fold to make the kind of envelope shape. You just want to fold it oops, with a slight gap there for tucking things in. Then bring the flap over again just reinforce that like that. So again, just take your glue and then just glue that down like that. I hope that I'm in frame. I will stand up in a second and just check that I am. And then I just fold that over like that and I mean I'm not actually I haven't made that terribly straight so you know just then trim down at the edges like that okay and then you've got just gorgeous envelope through these sides. One, oops, two. Like that. Okay. And that's another one. So, and they're really nice envelopes because they're quite roomy, these, um, you know, if you do them in the bigger size. I mean, again, as I always say, I mean, I do not me measure anything. So, you know, if you like measuring, then by all means do measure. You know, you must do what suits you. I personally don't like measuring. Um, and I'm more likely to get in a bit of a flap measuring and then getting it wrong than I am doing it, you know, ad hoc, really. So, right, I'm just checking. So hopefully I was in frame. And... Um, yeah hopefully you can see what I'm doing so we'll make another one and this time we'll use some scrapbook paper so again you know I don't measure so I'm just going to come up anywhere I like and then obviously you know the scrapbook paper is a lot thicker than the um the sheet music but you may still like to reinforce it just so you've got a bit more strength going on completely up to you and also probably dependent upon how thick your scrapbook paper is you know if you're using quite sort of thick scrapbook paper you may not need to do this stage at all um, you know <coughs> I mean for this one I probably didn't really need to do that at all but I just wanted to show you that obviously you can still use that method 
and then you want to just fold your flap down again leaving a bit of a gap like that and then again we will just I mean, this is a reasonable size scrap, I think. <laughs> I mean, probably anyone not into junk journals would look at that and say, are you kidding me? That's just like nothing. But I might keep that because <laughs> maybe I'd use that somewhere. So I'm just going to put that in amongst the rubbish that is my desk. So, you know, the chances are if I came to use it, I wouldn't be able to find it anyway, but I'll keep it nonetheless. So I just want to fold this over to reinforce the flap so you know as I say I really probably didn't need to do this because this scrapbook paper is pretty pretty thick anyway but I just wanted to demonstrate doing that really so I mean to be honest these envelopes they're very very similar to the um, fold out flips that we did I think it was probably even on week two um, except we're obviously gluing them together to make them actually into envelopes rather than keeping them as just flip out booklets. So there we go and then we'll just trim that down and just trim it down on this side as well and then obviously again this is where you could then stitch around with the sewing machine but in our case, or in my case, sorry, you know, for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to glue that down. Like that. Okay. So that's that one. So we'll make one more with me <laughs> telling you as if, you know, watching paint dry, how to do them. And then... Um, I can stop waffling about the process that we're actually doing. So again, I've just got an offcut here. I mean, these are just offcuts from other things that we have been making. Um, you know, so these are sh just to show you, because I've had a couple of people comment asking, oh, what would you do with the pieces that you've trimmed off? This is one way that you could use them. So again, I mean, this really doesn't need the doubling over and reinforcing. So I'm just going to fold that up like that. And then again, just leaving, you know, just a bit of a gap really so that you can tuck that down. Sorry, not tuck it down. So that you can, you know, tuck something in, get something into the flap. And just cut that across like that. And again, I mean, obviously, you may have decorative, um, you know, the scalloped kind of border things. I have got one, I think, for my die cut that would do like a, you know, fancy edge. You could have a template for that. You know, you could just draw around something and make a pretty edge there and cut that around. Um, you know, you can finish your envelopes off, obviously, any way that you choose. I think there's lots of different options. I mean, I often just um, round the corners rather than have any sort of scalloped edge. And the reason why I quite like doing that is because you can then stick lace and things across your flap where if I had a scalloped edge, I probably wouldn't really stick the lace down, um, you know, because I would kind of think it was a shame to cover up the scalloped edge. So what I like to do here is just, let me just straighten that slightly. I just round the corners like that. And that just neatens that off really nicely. And then obviously, if I just demonstrate, you could just finish that off with some lace. 
which looks so pretty, doesn't it? So, you know, for me, I don't really very often do any sort of fancy edge or anything because I quite like finishing it with some lace or something. But of course, you know, do what you want to do and how, how suits you. So just before I stop talking about what we're actually making, the last piece is this teeny weeny little scrap. So again, it's exactly the same method, just on a smaller scale. So I'm just, again, gluing those, you know, the reinforcing kind of flaps down like that. And then we fold the envelope up. And if you can see, I've just got a tiny little bit of rim there for sticking something in. I have to say, actually, I could have done with leaving a little bit more of a gap, but never mind. So what I could do is cut this down now because I have actually glued this together and then I can just obviously fill in any parts that the glue didn't grab like that. Oops. Oh, fiddly fiddly see this is why I do not very often work with tiny bits because um, I'm not really cut out for tiny and delicate I mean, I know that some people really get on brilliantly with making teeny things, but no, I don't. And um, stick with bigger is my, my thing, I think. There we go. But I mean, that is very cute, isn't it? And then, of course, I don't know whether that will fit. Probably won't fit. But that might. You could then just pop something teeny in that envelope. And obviously that glue is far from dry, but, you know, you could pop something in there, which is very sweet, isn't it? And I've just realised that we didn't round the corners on here. So I'm just going to do that while we're here. Okay. Right. So that's those. Um, so now I'm just going to now take any sort of pieces that I've brought along here to be using up. Again, I'm going to keep this because I could make a tag or something like that from there. So I should really gather a bag to keep my scraps. Actually, I have to be truthful. These um, mass making workshops, they are actually encouraging me to think in a slightly more organised way. I'm not saying I'm being more organised. No, that has not happened yet. But I'm definitely starting to think in a slightly more organised way. So, um, yeah, let me know if that seems to be working for you or not. So I'm going to cut this down, I think. So, I mean, this one is a really teeny piece. So, again, I'm just going to fold that over there. if we could make this a sort of triangular shape now I often muck these up and this is where obviously measuring would be kind of useful so you probably would recommend that you do measure doing these but again I don't so often it comes and um, you know comes back to haunt me oops when I muck things like this up so Okay, so there's a little kind of, um, what do you call it, like a, a V-shaped flap. So, there we go. Just glue those down. Let me grab my wipe that has dried out. Okay. okay yeah I had quite a funny comment the other day from Sherry so hi Sherry if you're watching um we were talking about the Fabri-Tac and um you know obviously how I get in such a mess with it I mean that's not surprising because I do get generally in a mess when crafting so not surprising at all but um we did laugh or I did laugh because 
she said something like, um, oh, don't worry, everyone gets in a mess with Fabri-Tac, except for Wendy and Tracy. She's so right, isn't she? And I said, wow, you know, so true. I don't know how Wendy and Tracy manage it, but I don't think I've ever, ever seen them, either one of them, messy. I mean, you know, they do lovely pieces of work. They do all sorts of different sticking and everything else. How do they not get glue on them? I really am very baffled. I have no idea. So can you see that? Just uh, obviously that's a little bit tatty. But again, if you kind of inked that up, that would just disguise that piece. And then you've got a little kind of V on that one. So now I've got this one. So again, just grab that there. Yeah, I don't know how people manage to um, not get messy. I would love to know how people don't get in a mess. I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't really bother me, you know, because it's just how I am. And um, I'm always very messy, but I am a bit intrigued when people don't get messy because I don't, you know, I can't actually <laughs> kind of comprehend how they haven't got messy. I find it really truly baffling so yeah my daughter appears to be just like me and funnily enough we were at the park the other day and um, they had a zip wire and <laughs> she was with her friend and it was her friend her friend's mum and me and she was trying to get on the zip wire and obviously it was quite high, so she couldn't really get on it. So she was saying, you know, mummy help me. And I was having to stand below and try and assist her getting on there. Could I assist her? No. We were just making such a hash of it. And it was so hilarious, you know. And then um, her friend, who obviously is the same age as her, you know, she just kind of hopped straight on it. But weirdly enough, her mum then had to help because we then um, they wanted to do it standing up so her mum had to actually kind of help hold the zip wire seat thing still you know while her daughter climbed up and her mum just was able to hold it just to, you know in this really easy way it just looked like no effort whatsoever I was trying to hold it it was moving about everywhere my daughter was flailing around everywhere it was just kind of like a scene from a comedy. It just was hilarious. And, um, yeah, I mean, I said to my friend, oh, don't, I'm just really pathetic at anything that requires a little bit of, I don't know what the word would be, but, you know, I mean, in crafting terms, I would say, you know, maybe dexterity kind of um, issues kind of cause you to be a bit clumsy. But, I mean, obviously, that wasn't really dexterity. That was just... I don't know I don't know what what that's called but yeah just <laughs> absolutely ridiculous and it's exactly the same if we go for a walk or anything you know I'm going to be the first person who's going to fall over you know like if we're on like a muddy walk or you know something like that I'm going to be the first person to fall over out of kind of you know me and the kids and my husband so again you know my daughter if we're somewhere you know that's a bit slippery or anything like that always just say to her there's no point in holding mummy's hand because you know mummy will pull you over I will be the first person who's going to fall over and everyone kind of knows that now um you know well in my family I mean kind of me and the children and my husband we all know that and um subsequently nobody bothers trying to hold my hand nobody would want to hold my hand because obviously they're more likely to fall over than not so Right, I'm going to just trim this down because I don't want this showing on the inside flap. So I'm just going to trim that down. So, I mean, if ever we go for a walk, like, without my husband, not sure whether to keep this or not. Am I being ridiculous? Oh, I'll put it in the maybe pile. <laughs> um, yeah, if we go anywhere without my husband, so, therefore you know he's not there to kind of hold on to my daughter's hand or something um 
then my eldest son, I mean, he's brilliant. Well, actually, they're both brilliant. They hold her hand instead. You know, she holds their hand. Because it's such a, a thing that, you know, there's just no point holding mine. Yeah, ridiculous. But, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with the... Um, with the clumsiness I guess is is what I would describe it as just very clumsy accident prone maybe that's the, the term so yeah but everyone knows that you know and so it's all fine because we've all kind of worked around it and we all just do what needs to be done so okay I don't know where I get it from because my mum is not really like that. I don't think my sisters are like that. It just seems to be just me. So, uh, well, just me. And I've got this horrible feeling that possibly my daughter is a bit like that as well, judging by, <laughs> judging by us trying to get her onto the zip wire. Well, somehow or other, we did manage to get her onto the zip wire and obviously she managed to have several turns, you know. Um, but it was just so comical because obviously this other little girl's mum, she just did it in such an eloquent, elo eloquent way. And as did her daughter, actually, she just kind of jumped on it and, you know, the mum just held it in place and it all just looked so absolutely fine and hassle free. My daughter and I tried to do it. Oh my gosh. It was just like the clumsy leading the clumsy. You know, like that expression, the blind leading the blind. We were the clumsy leading the clumsy. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we're all different, aren't we? So, and it all just leads for good fun and um, adventures, doesn't it? I mean, we went for a walk. This was quite a long time ago. Um, might have been even before my daughter, so maybe even like six years ago or seven years ago. Just standing up, checking the time. Um, yeah, so really quite a long time ago. And um, it was through this, it was like a nature reserve that we have here. So it was quite swampy in places. And um, we were walking through there and I mean obviously this was you know all those years ago so I mean my 13 year old was kind of like six or something so similar age in fact to my daughter now so you know I'm saying to him oh be careful be careful because you know what kids are like they're running ahead of you aren't they so I'll oh, be careful be careful you know mind you don't slip over it's very swampy you know nope who fell over me and um <laughs> it was like thick black tar that I fell in it wasn't um you know it wasn't as swampy as it looked it was actually like this really thick tarry kind of yucky stuff so I just couldn't get it off I'm just going to keep that as well um yeah I just couldn't get it off and uh obviously there were no toilets or anything because we were in the middle of the nature reserve you know out in the kind of fields and um, we got back to the car, which was in, you know, quite a basic car park. But they did have toilets there and they did, unbelievably, they did have soap in the toilets. So obviously I went in the toilet. Oh my gosh. I scrubbed my hands about probably, you know, eight times. Would that tar come off? No. It stayed on there for about three days. Not obviously as black as it had been originally. But quite quite thick you know or quite quite noticeable anyway so um yeah and we all laugh about it still now and say oh what the place where you fell over you mean yep that's the place so um that's yeah that's what that walk's known as and funnily enough we went on another one um much more recently because our daughter was with us so probably I don't know a couple of years ago somewhere else um and there's a harbour there so we were walking around the harbour and it's a tidal you know um kind of place so the tide comes up and you know goes out so we're walking around and um 
the tide must have gone out you know it had been up and it had then gone out and uh, <laughs> my foot just got stuck in the because it obviously left quite a swampy dense kind of um, surface I suppose is what I would describe it as um, and I mean I was wearing silly shoes you know like kind of pumps like ballet pumps kind of thing because obviously we weren't really expecting it to be that kind of walk we were thinking it was going to be you know a walk more on just pavement well not pavement but you know gravel kind of surface so it wasn't supposed to be like a country hike or anything so I wasn't wearing my hiking boots or anything like that so I had on just these ballet pump things and um, <sighs> my foot just got stuck in the swamp you know my shoe just got stuck in the swamp so as I took a step my foot just came straight out my shoe just stuck into the swamp and um, yeah had to then just try and kind of like put my foot back into the shoe and pull the shoe out on my foot and again it was such horrible thick gunky type stuff and um, <laughs> I kind of got my foot out and obviously my foot had sunk into the ground you know or into the swamp quite a bit um, I'm just going to actually punch a thumb hole here in this one so I'm just going to take my circle punch and I just use my head I'm just going to punch a hole there so you can do that in your envelopes as well which is actually quite a nice thing to do and obviously makes it just slightly easier for getting things in and out so and that's just using my one inch hole punch um, circle hole punch yeah so I obviously got my my foot out and when I say foot it was foot and leg because obviously this swampy kind of stuff that I had gone in it went right up I mean almost to my knee actually so a good you know several inches deep and I had all this thick, horrible, swampy, again, sort of tarry type, muddy ugh, stuff all up my leg, which my legs were bare, you know, I had on kind of, um, you know, a skirt and um, bare legs and my ballet pumps kind of thing. So it was all over my, my leg, <laughs> right up to, you know, almost my knee. It was just so funny and so again we all were just laughing and you know I had some tissue with me I obviously didn't have wipes or anything but I just had some tissue in my my handbag so I was trying to kind of wipe it off and clean it off a bit well again it obviously didn't want to come off you know it needed to be scrubbed off with water and soap so I had to just walk around for the rest of the walk like that and at the end of that particular walk we like to go into a little cafe and my husband has a pot of tea, I have a hot chocolate and the kids have an ice cream. So we did do that because obviously that's their reward. I mean, my daughter especially, that's her reward for doing the walk, you know, and she wouldn't have taken too kindly to then not having an ice cream. But, oh, how embarrassing. I had to then obviously go into the cafe covered in this muddy, swampy stuff all up my leg to my knee nearly. So yeah, very messy person and um, not just where it comes to craft things, but generally, very messy generally. So yeah, hopefully I'm not the only person, you know, hopefully lots of you guys are a bit like me as well. But clearly not Tracy or Wendy, <sighs> not, not Tracy or Wendy, who are obviously super clean. Well, it's not that I'm not clean, but, you know, super not clumsy. I mean, I can't imagine either of them going on a walk and falling over into the mud. can't imagine them then going in for a coffee or a hot chocolate, you know, covered in the mud. But, yeah, I am um, definitely that way inclined, so. Right. So, again just going to glue this <clears throat> glue this down so I mean again as you can hopefully see I'm just reinforcing some and not reinforcing others because obviously it's just dependent on how thick the card is this is thickish card 
it seems quite sturdy so there wasn't really any need to do that this is thinner card so I wanted to reinforce that one and again you know we could just punch in a little thumb hole in here and obviously this isn't great because the glue is still a little bit wet but just to show you and then we'll just fold our flap over like that and then I'm just going to cut that down again just so that we can reinforce the flap like that we tend to go for lots of walks in the um, winter really because uh, I don't really overly like going for walking you know especially kind of hard work kind of more hikey type walks when it's hot so you know we we like walking really in the winter I mean not not if it's raining obviously we're a bit fair weather fair weather walkers but you know providing it's not raining we quite like going for walks in the winter um, and I love love to go for bike rides in the summer and again, I mean, when I say bike rides, I'm talking, you know, mooch around bike rides. I don't mean, you know, certainly not cycling shorts and all that malarkey, you know. <laughs> um, I just mean, again, fair weather. So if the weather's nice, let's just go out for a really nice bike ride, you know. So we went for a really nice bike ride at the weekend. I mean, again, I'm filming these videos ahead, so by the time this goes up, it might be atrocious weather. Um, but as I'm filming this, obviously the weather wasn't atrocious, it was still quite nice. So we had a really lovely bike ride at the weekend, and um, yeah, it was really nice. Right, let's see what the time is and how we're doing. What is the time? Oh, 37. That's okay, we could probably do a couple more, and then we'll just decorate one up, so... That's not too bad, is it? So again, I've got this um, scrapbook paper, which again is a kind of off cut. Just going to trim this down. And to be honest, I don't know why I'm trimming it down now. I could have just trimmed it down once we folded it. Now this is quite finished scrapbook paper. So again, Actually, it's thicker than I thought. I was going to say I'll fold that over, but actually it's not too bad, so I don't think I will. And again, we'll just fold the flap over. Again, I should cut that down. Yeah, and again, I'm just going to keep this little scrap. <laughs> so I need to think of... Um, some other things that we can make with the little scraps. And I know that I have said that I'm going to do a video using some of these pieces or some videos using up some of these pieces that we're making. So again, because I'm filming ahead, you know, I may have already started doing that um, already. If I haven't, it's in the pipeline. So, um, yeah. I am aware that people would like some videos on, you know, how to use these bits and bobs. So, I promise you, I haven't forgotten, and it's in the pipeline if I haven't started it already at the time of this video going out. I think the thing is, doing these weekly workshops, you know, and it's a bit like the Alphabet Challenge, because they're once a week, it's very easy to get complacent and then think, oh, I'll do them on that week. And then you've only got to have a couple of things going on that week. And you might not get time to do it. So, and I don't want to obviously miss a week. So it's better, I'm finding it, you know, to film ahead and make sure that I do have them ready for uploading. So, yeah, that's why, that's why I'm doing it this way. Got here I'm just looking on my desk you know which is obviously the tip that it always is 
Just seeing what else I've got here, scrap-wise, that needs using up. Thing is, things have now got buried so far. I can't actually really see what's even here. Oh, here we go. No, that's a tiny bit. I thought it was a long piece, but no. Hold on. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, here we go. We've got some other pieces that we've yet to use up. And I just want to say thank you so much. I don't know whether I'm repeating myself now, actually. I might have already said thank you. But, yeah, thank you so much um, to everyone who's been crafting along in these workshops. I'm so thrilled that they seem to be being enjoyed. You know, I didn't know, obviously, when I started them, whether people would think, oh, gosh, how boring. You know, we're just making the same thing over and over. Um, but thankfully... They really seem to be quite um, popular at the moment anyway while I'm filming this. It may be that they've dropped off by the time this goes out. But so far anyway, they seem to be quite popular. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, really pleased that people are enjoying them. And to be fair, <laughs> you know, although I obviously found them pretty boring at first because... I'm the world's worst for not mass making things. I do not really tend to do things over and over. I just make one and that's it. Um, to be fair, it is kind of helping me get in a more organised zone. I mean, even looking at my desk now, <laughs> it looks such a mess. And I have got quite an urge to actually tidy it up a little bit. Um, and things like, you know, when I've obviously popped them into that photograph box thing that I showed you at the beginning of the video. That's been really nice to do. And seeing them all just laid out really neatly is kind of fueling me. I can't say as I've started yet, but it's fueling me <laughs> to start thinking about other things that I can actually clear up. So, yeah, I'm hopefully going to start getting into the mode of this will be an automatic kind of thing for me um, right sorry this piece and this piece they're just already folded I've used them for something else where I folded them so I've just cut that down to be the bottom of my envelope I might cut it down slightly more And then, obviously, I'm just going to make my flap at the top there. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's just helping me to think in a slightly more organised way, I think. Um, as I say, I haven't really done anything to action that any further. But maybe I will. Maybe I will eventually. So we'll see. I mean, for instance, things like the, you know, my original pieces, like that I have bought from car boot sales and things. I mean, at the moment, they're all just kind of piled up in my cupboard downstairs. Um, not really in any sort of order or anything like that. And I'm just beginning to think, you know, about how better I could store things like that so I am gradually coming round to you know how can I kind of organize my stuff better so and I just think it can only be because of these mass making things because it is quite nice getting rid of quite a big volume of paper using stuff you know using it up but equally, it's kind of causing more different things to be needed to be stored. So, you know, it's making me actually consciously think about how to um, how to store things. Right. Let me now have a look and see what the time is. OK, we're at 45 minutes nearly. So probably time now to decorate 
one or two. So let's just count up how many we've made because I love that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Now, <laughs> is it me or have we made fourteen nearly every single time? I think we have, haven't we? It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, so I can't remember, but I feel like 14 seems to be our kind of um, our number. Right, now again, I'm just grabbing things that are laying around my desk because, you know, <laughs> part of the mass making thing is obviously trying to clear up a little bit, I suppose. Um, don't get me wrong, it will take a whole lot more than just just a couple of mass making videos to clear my desk but I'm just going to grab things as I spot them and just use them so I've got this rose this is from my beauty fair kit and um, I really like it on I actually really like it on either one of these so now should we have it on there the only thing is it's obviously then under that flap, if we have it on there, again it's under the flap but that might be better, let's just pop that to one side, I've got this little lady locket, let's just cut her out, so I mean things like this I'm finding quite nice to get things like this off of my desk, um, you know as I say it's not making a dent in the mess that's on my desk but at least it's you know psychologically I feel better because I think oh it's another thing gone it's another thing <sighs> another one bites the dust you know a million more to go but another one bites the dust there so we could have her I'm thinking we could have her as a um like a stopper to be honest or, oh, got that teacup. Oh, that's quite sweet on there, isn't it? Or maybe even on here. Ooh, decisions, decisions. This is the fun bit, isn't it? I mean, I love doing the decorating part. So, you know, they're not horrible decisions. They're great fun. Let's just see. Right, just pulling in some other bits and bobs that are just laying around on here. Because this is quite a long envelope, I'm feeling like I either need to kind of cluster a couple of items together or have something longer shaped. So I'm just going to have a look. Oh, I've just suddenly thought of something that I can use. Right, I will be two seconds. I'm just going to grab it off of my pile. Hold on. Right, I managed to get these beautiful rectangular doilies. Aren't they lovely? So I just suddenly then thought, oh, one of those maybe along that flap. <gasps> Isn't that lovely? Oh, I love that. Yeah, let me move that to one side a bit. Do we want it on the flap or do we want it? Yeah, on the flap, on the flap, right. So, what I'm going to do now, this is going to be tricky, I'm going to just dab on some glue. Now this is where probably a glue, a glue stick would be really handy. I don't have any glue stick I'm afraid, so um, you know, I'm just going to have to make do with what I've got here. So not the best method of gluing I'm sure, but a glue stick would be perfect. So. Right, so obviously this doily has been coffee dyed, so, and I bought these for my kits that I was doing, and again, obviously I don't know how I'm filming these videos, whether I'll have done the kits yet or not, but they're really lovely, aren't they? Oh, that's so nice. So I'm just going to fold that here. Mm, no, I'm tempted to. No, that's just silly. I was going to say I'm tempted to glue it down, but 
then I'm just covering up all that beautiful sheet music. So why would I want to do that? Oh dear, sometimes we just get carried away, you know, because I love the appearance of the sheet music and then it's, I love the appearance of the doily. So, right. That's just lovely, isn't it? And as I say, these doilies, they've been coffee dyed, so that's why it's got that gorgeous appearance. So I'm just going to ink this on the, the sheet music. That was just fluke because that turned out just perfect size, that doily piece for this um, envelope. So how lucky was that? Now I have to confess, these are some cheap brand foam pads that I've tried, not that I'm trying. I've only just opened them this morning, so I don't know what I think to them. They're a bit splotched, sploshy, sploshy, sploshy. Um, but that could be me, to be honest, who knows. Anyway, hopefully you won't really notice when it's on there, but I just thought I would try them. I think they were from Amazon, if I recall. I couldn't tell you what brand they are, but I just thought I would give them a try. There we go. Right, now, do we want to have these two bits here, or down here? Got a butterfly here. Looks quite nice. Right, let me ink these up so these look nice and grunged up. Otherwise, they're not really kind of in keeping. There we go. So I hope everyone's having a good day, and I hope that you're um, managing to get some mass makes done as well. Well, if you want to. I mean, obviously. <laughs> Obviously not if you're not wanting to, but I've got some lace trim here. Did we want to pop some lace? Nope, not that one. It's very rarely that I don't think that looks good on every single thing, but for some reason that didn't look so good on there. Look at this spotty one. No. Nope. I'm just, again, using the things that I've got to hand because I don't want to end up having to go and find some other lace so um oh that's nice isn't it oh yeah i love that should we ink that a bit let's just have a look okay Oh, that's so pretty. Now, weirdly, I'm kind of feeling a bit of a colourless vibe going on. So I might have to find something a bit more colourless in a minute to put on the envelope. Which, that's strange because I don't normally do colourless, but I did make quite a colourless piece the other day in my um, alphabet challenge. And now I'm kind of going colourless again, so maybe I'm maybe I'm on the turn. On the turn? Is that is that an expression? I hope that's not a rude expression. <sighs> I mean I was thinking on the turn that's like when milk or something goes off, but now I'm thinking, oh maybe it's something rude. I apologise if that is something rude. I was definitely not meaning it as something rude. I was just meaning <laughs> maybe I'm converting converting and again I would say over to the dark side but actually in this case it would be the opposite wouldn't it so converting from the dark side to the light side got that which is a really nice kind of colorless piece I could have that let's just see what else I've got No, I'm definitely going colourless on here. So what is that about? Why am I suddenly wanting colourless things? How very strange. I'm sure that's probably a one-off. I'm sure that I haven't really converted. 
but um, who knows? Maybe I have. Maybe I have. Ooh. Oh, or maybe I haven't. That's really pretty, isn't it? Just going to look down through the camera and see, does that look better in the middle or does it look better to the side? Oh, maybe to the side. Maybe to the side. Yeah. Let's see. No, it's not really the right colour pink there, but. So I'm just going to glue this piece on. The last video that I filmed was um, one of the alphabet challenges and it's really weird because now I'm feeling a bit like oh mush 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 because I feel like the timer is on and um, yeah it's quite strange because obviously the timer isn't on so I've got no need to be rushing but I'm kind of aware now of the time which is very odd very odd so I might just round the corners here Oops. that's pretty isn't it and then I'm just going to see if I've got some pearl trim bless her look my daughter's necklace broke so she said to me oh here you go mummy this is for your journals <sighs> sweet isn't she she's obviously going to be just you know like me and not really chuck anything away that thing. Oh, perhaps I could use that. Perhaps I could use that. Oh, let's see. Is that too blue? That's too blue, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like that. A bit of bling. I was actually looking for my pearl trim. Aha. Just spotted some here. Oh, come on. Oh, for goodness sake, stop it. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Oh, gosh, it's just sticking all over me. Right. Maybe. Now, do I like it there? Or sort of more? I don't want it to look really uniform, you know, is the thing. And I'm just thinking, let's just have one more thing on here. So I'm just going to cut this word down. quite relaxed doing this actually it's um I mean therapeutic is probably an exaggeration but definitely kind of relaxing I think so right let's just cut this down Again, let me just stand up and see how that looks. Or should we have that here? Is this all just looking a bit lopsided? One one sided. Don't want to look like I'm balancing it out. I actually wish I hadn't stuck this on here now, which is annoying if I stick that over it. Well, that's quite nice, isn't it? So you can still see it a little bit, but we've just got that sort of on top of it. So, right, let's just use the Fabri Tac, stick that down. Come on. Oh. Messy, messy. Okay, and then pop my word on there. Like that, maybe just even to the side a bit. 
And then my pearl trim, do I want that down there or do I want it kind of up here? Maybe there. So again, I just glue that on here like that. Okay. Oh, I love how that looks. That's so pretty. So pretty. Right. So gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, that was stuck on my finger and I thought, oh no, I've, I've now pulled that up. Isn't that gorgeous? Just such a pretty envelope. So really, really pretty. And I mean, again, obviously, if you wanted to reinforce here, because I mean, obviously, this is very old um, sheet music. So it's kind of prone to cracking. So you could always then just either reinforce it with some fabric, which I'm just having a look around to see if I've got any suitable. So I've got here some of that cheesecloth-y fabric. So if I just cut a little strip. You could reinforce it with the fabric. Like that. Or you could obviously reinforce it with some more paper. So, for instance, if I just bring in some more sheet music. Put that down. I could just cut. A piece. And then just pop that over there. And then it would just kind of double that up, really, and just reinforce that. So I might do that just because, obviously, you know, this is going to be folding open and shut quite a lot. So I'm just a little bit concerned in case it's, you know, likely to crack. So by just doing this, we just hopefully... eliminating risk a bit so there we go again my card come on like that just spread the glue and I mean obviously I should have really done that before all the decorating and things but hey ho so like this And again, I mean, some sheet music is worse for things like this than others. Obviously, again, it depends as well how old your sheet music is. You know, mine is quite old, so it's quite delicate now. So then, again, just ink that up so it, you know, blends in properly with the rest of the envelope. Now, one last thing. I know I keep on adding things to the... Oh, one other thing, one other thing, one other thing. But honestly, last thing this time. I just wondered whether I might want to have a little tab there. So I'm just going to take this lace and just cut a teeny little tab. So I will just ink this up quickly. Like that. Again, just take a little bit of Fabri-Tac, probably to the fabric itself, and then just pop that there. Hopefully, that's roughly in the centre, and then a little bit on the back. Oops! Come on! Oh gosh! Come on! Stop sticking on me, stick on the paper. Okay. So, I mean, it didn't necessarily need that, but I just think that looks very pretty. And um, 
you know, just adds another little aspect to it, really. So that's our little long envelope piece. Now, obviously, we're up to like an hour and five minutes, so I probably haven't really got time to decorate another piece, but, you know, I'm sure that you get the idea. So let me just pull in a journal page. Again, I haven't got a journal on the go, but I've just got this piece folded up here. So you could just pop this on. I mean, you could have this glued in like a little flap here with an envelope. Or you could just have it, you know, paper clipped onto a page or something like that. However you wanted to do it. But absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Really, really pretty. Um, obviously, if you're having it float in, you'd want to probably distress ink the back as well. But, you know, you may want to just have it as a floating piece around your journal or you may want to have it you know glued down so thank you very much for joining me i hope that you managed to get plenty of envelopes done yourself as well and um yeah i hope that you'll join me next week for more mass making thanks then bye